it's me again on my Todd because it's that process wherefore it's just relentless painting. What am I painting with? Let me show you. Now, I'm not sure what you get over the pond, but here in the UK, we get a product called Cupronol Shades. And this comes in a variety of different colours, and it is the best stuff I've found for painting courses. Number one, 20 pounds roughly, it can vary, maybe up to 25, but 20 pound will get you two and a half litres of the stuff. And it will go really long way because it's quite thin. I've got a load of different colours left over from a load of jobs I've done in the past, decking jobs, painting sheds and stuff like that. And I'm actually just going to mix them all together and make a kind of dirty colour just to base the whole thing with. I'm also going to be adding the powdered wood glue into it because then it's also going to help with sealing the whole area and the river. Um, other than that, this process really isn't that exciting. It is literally going to be me and a paintbrush slapping some paint on. So if we're going to look at measurements, if you kind of want a rough guide, it's four tablespoons to two and a half litres of paint. So that's four tablespoons of wood glue, powdered wood glue, to your two and a half litres of paint and mix until you can't see no more powder, basically. Can add more, you could add less. There really probably isn't much of a gauge. The more you add, the less time you're going to have to paint. The less you add the more time you're going to have to paint. And once you've done that, slap it on. Okay, so I'm just slapping it on now. Um, the river I've actually put on quite thick. Um, I didn't actually water it down or anything. I just put it on nice and thick and that will have a good couple of coats. But the rest of it just needs a wash. So, you know, once I did the river run i just added a bit of water topped it right up just so i've got a wash left and i just can wash over the whole lot that will still give protection and it will still have a waterproof layer on it because it's got the glue in there and it's going to seep really deep into the concrete as well so let's just have a quick look at it and there it is just keeping that nice consistency going throughout the whole thing and this will dry a lot darker but just for a base coat before we start putting on some other colors it just basically tones everything into the single coat. Now, I know what you're thinking, why would you want to do that? Well, <clears throat> when you're painting things to look realistic, you've got to add the washes, you've got to add the base coats and bring it up. The best way to start is with the rock color that's going to rock base because the rest of it in between, for example, like you see here, this will be a rock, that will be a rock, this will be a rock sticking out the mud. This will all be mud and grass. So we're trying to just pick up the, the different accents and so that when we're building the colors throughout the whole thing, before we get to that final stage of kind of dry brushing and adding a detail to the rocks, we just got this nice consistency throughout the whole thing. Now you could just go around and pick everything out and paint each bit individually, but it would take you an awful long time to do that. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is an RC course. We are gonna be giving it a good kick in. So you don't want to be spending months and months hand painting every little rock. Go for a quick process and durable and, you know, as realistic looking as I possibly can make it, this will be the thing. Now these, uh, you see this little point here and this little loop and then up here, we're actually going to be grassing all that and there'll be bushes all the way along the top. So it really gives a good depth of perception on the course now the thing i will say about this cuprinol stuff is that you cannot recoat well you can but the best thing to do is recoat if you do all your coats in one go you wait 20 minutes then recoat it or wait half an hour then recoat it if you wait until the following day it will be completely cured and then it will do this you see how it's just dropleting on the back it will do that on itself because it goes waterproof and it, it, it takes a long time for it to actually adhere back to itself so if you're going to tech and coat things with one color, get it done the same day. All right. That is the wash done. Not too worried about the tunnel. That's going to be a different, that's going to be blacked out anyway. So once we cement that and black it out, it's going to be very different to the rest of it. But that 
has brought it all tied in together. Nice thick, icky gooey coat around the river. Plenty of glue, plenty of uh, waterproof and that. Um, all the way along there. And that's just really nice because you can actually see the difference of the river, how I've made it quite smooth. We're going to be putting boulders in it and that will help keep the water coming over the top. Um, just so we can make a few steps and gradients and a little deeper in places. We've got this really fine grit to sit at the bottom to you know really give it a nice looking feel. Down. Awesome. So that is the easy part done. Getting the coat on, getting the sheets, the cement, the top coat, well, the, the, the base coat of the paint. That was all the easy part. <clears throat> now comes the harder part. I've got to basically paint all the mud in, all the stone in, all the rock in, the mountainside. They've all got to be individually painted, but it's got to be seamless so that the countryside or this whole kind of view is seamless. Overall, we're going quite well. I wish G-Dog was here. Where the is G-Dog all the time? And he wonders why I do all the work. Yeah, it's me. It's Friday night about nine o'clock. I'm down the shack and I'm armed and dangerous. What am I doing? I'm laying down some bulk colour, and this little beauty does it lickety split. All right, so all I'm doing is just laying down some bulk foundation colours. This is kind of vital for building up your layers of your paint as you start to do the paint and detail. The River Run has had its third and final coat. The pipes are in and sealed, ready for the returns. And I'm basically going around the whole kind of areas of mud, giving this light mud dusting. And this is just the foundation colors. I'm gonna do a little bit, as you can see, I've been doing the banks of the river, adding a little bit, just in and out the river as well. It's not great, I'm working by uh, one light at the moment. <laughs> but I'm just gonna hit all the road, dust the top of the pinch, just with this light water-based uh, paint. Uh, this is like an 800 milliliter canister. I put like 200 mil of paint and then filled the remainder up with water. So it's a real watery mix. And this is basically just to add a bind coat to the layers. I am gonna hit mine as mound again because we have decided that this section just here, coming off of the kind of harsh mountain, will be a bit green before you come down into the kind of stony area again as well. Hit the track with a load of mud. Still got the tunnel to do, I'm not too worried about that. It's quite easy. And yeah, this is another quick, speedy process. It's quite difficult to see tonight because the light is fading while I'm down here. But we'll get a better look at it tomorrow once it's dry. The color I'm actually using, I found is a really good color from this brand. It's called Seasoned Oak. And uh, it's a real nice muddy color. Now, these are not a stain. These are paint. This is why I use it. It's a really good brand. Goes waterproof, really durable, and it adheres to wood, cement, clay, plastic. I mean, it's just super, super great and cheap. For, I think for one, one liter, it's like less than 15 pound. I think for the big two and a half liters, they're 24 pound so yeah it's pretty pretty affordable stuff especially when you try to cover a big area like this okay so this is an amazon spray tool they're not the cheapest it's about 80 pounds but it's not just used for this job i've used it for doing decking and and fencing and everything like that it's run on a little 18 volt lithium battery it's not for fine detail Let's just put it out there. It's for quick, thick coating, big panel stuff. But for blocking out color on this, it is super quick. Let me show you how quick it is. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> it 
it's that quick. <laughs> uh, it's all about the tools. You got the tools, you can get the job done nice and quick. So it's about 10 o'clock at night now. Um, and I can barely see in there. I come into the other workshop to actually film this section because the light's barely existent in there. Luckily, I've just got block colours just to kind of flash around and then um, I'm going to call it a night and come back down here tomorrow morning and Jude Dog's going to be in tomorrow afternoon and he's going to uh, rig up some lighting because we only found out last time that we don't have any lighting. And uh, yeah, it's really humid. Who think you get this sweaty just spraying a paint gun? Anyway, a little bit more to do and then I'm going to call it a night. So it's Saturday morning about nine o'clock um, and I've just come down here to see how it looked after just hitting it with some block colours last night. Um, I was really struggling with light to be fair. I was working off a tiny little lamp, was giving shadows everywhere. Um, G-Dog's going to be down here this afternoon, hopefully start wiring up some lights so we can actually spend a little bit more time down here in the evenings. Um, I have a weekend of gigs, so getting down here is going to be pretty tricky. So this is where we're at. <laughs> just start seeing the color coming through now in the areas this was only a wash this was a 70 30 mix so 70 percent water 30 percent paint and it's uh, just a light wash all the way around the whole area this slate color and brown um, just trying to block out the color uh, before you start adding detail in uh, yeah, it's it looks wicked. It's come up really, really well. Can't wait to kind of darken this right up and then put the whole kind of light grey dry brushing on it. But already it's starting to really take a lot more shadow shape and, and, and just start popping on the camera a bit better now. So that's kind of where we're at. Down a coal mine mound again. We're just... Blocking out a load of colour, getting some brown in there, getting some greys in there. Hitting it with different shades of colour before we start really kind of doing the detail work. Alright, let's have a closer look at this section. Now, I'm not sure if it picks up very well on the camera. But what you can see is this kind of tone here and then this tone here. Okay, bits there, it's a little bit there. Now that's exactly the same color, just one's neat paint and one is a wash. And that's kind of how I create the layers coming through. And I just wanted to make sure that it did actually give some type of distinct discrepancy between the two, which it clearly does. And then what I'll go through in this pickup, like here where you see this heavy grain just here, I'll actually dry brush some light gray over that so it looks like stones and grit actually sat on the mud coming through the mud so you get this nice texture coming through and that is uh that's where the time is going to be coming through but I'm, I'm really liking this kind of mud tone to the to the stone you know this is quite muddy there's a river it's dirty stony yeah we kind of try to represent our kind of terrain in the UK. We don't have these big mountain ranges like you do across the pond. Um, it's more mud and rock, quite green. So that's kind of what we're kind of going for in this terrain. Right, so I'm gonna take a few moments to answer one big question that we've been getting quite a lot about creases. Uh, these These things just here, okay? Now, when you're, when you're doing things like this, you have to think about what the problem is, what the solution is, and what the solution will create, i.e. will it create a different type of problem? So we could have taken the dust sheet and ripped it down into kind of four or five inch strips and layered it all over the place. And yes, that would have got rid of a lot of the pleats but it creates a second problem, a problem which I think is harder to disguise than a crease. Let me explain. Dust sheet material. It's almost three times thicker than your average 
bandage wrap that people use to cover their courses. If I strip this down into four inch strips, every time you put a strip over a strip, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker, giving you wads of material that you've got to try and paste out and describe. Now, this doesn't flatten down as easy as your plaster cloths. So when you overlay it, there's quite a lot of cement that has to go in to disguise the line. Let me show you. So along this ridge just here, there was a join that joined two pieces of cloth together. Now to give you some type of idea of what the amount of um, cement I've had to paste, that's the thickness we're talking about, okay? That's a lot of cement to try and fade out a crease or a, a join because of how thick the fabric is that we're using. So that when you overlap it, it creates a ridge itself. Now, if I did that throughout the whole of this project, you would quite simply have thousands of straight lines to get rid of. So yes, you will get rid of not, you know a lot of the pleats. You're still gonna get pleats by stripping it. Okay, that's definitely gonna happen. Uh, it's a cloth, it will, it will always pleat. However, trying to disguise lots of straight lines um, in a natural environment is a lot harder than trying to disguise creases and drapes like this because you can make this look natural. I can shade all this up so it looks part of the rock fascia. I can't do that with straight lines. And yes, to compromise, I have got this area here. But once this is all dressed up, you're not going to even notice the creases or even that it's tucked away like that. Okay, I did it like that because I needed to tuck it all in. You disguise all that with natural rocks, bushes, trees, grass, logs, whatever you want to do. To, to It's not like we're going to be crawling on it. We can really do whatever we like over there. Starting to kind of low light some of the creases and bring out some of the rock faces and stuff like that. And it starts just to take a much more natural look. And the good thing about these pleats is that if we dropped a bit of glue on there and sprinkled some grass, which, you know, a lot of this is going to be quite green, these will look like grassy mounds, little breakthroughs of grass that are coming through. You know, just here, we can add a bush just here and glue and grass this section just up here, which will look awesome and give it a much more organic and natural look. The pros and cons of strips and doing a full blanket. For me, I weighed up both of them and disguising a ton of creases is a lot easier to create more of an organic terrain than having thousands of straight lines that I've got to try and paste out and get rid of by building up thick layers of cement. So if that's what somebody wants to do, that's great. But for me, it's easier to work with the creases than it is with lots of straight lines and endless amounts of cement pasting, building up, you know, five, six mil thick in areas to try and get over. Because remember, when you're trying to wrap a rock, you're not just going to do strips coming down. You may have to do a strip going round. You may have to do strips going diagonally. And then you've got to try and get that all nice and smooth. And then you've got to cover it. It's completely doable. And if that's what you want to take on that as your own project, then fantastic. At least you know it works one way or another. But for us, this is a much easier way to deal with the creases than it is trying to deal with lines. I hope that answers the question of why we've done the way we've done it. And hopefully it gives you um, a little bit more information about what route you're going to take when you decide to do your own mini crawler course. All right, so let's have a look at this place just here. This has uh, got a few creases in it. But if you actually look at it, it looks like a natural mudslide. And that's how I will end up kind of dry brushing and decorating it up into. I'll, I'll really low light all these concaves and then light, light dry brush the mud on top. And then all these little bits of individual rock, I'll actually take a dry brush and just dry brush a light gray over the whole lot, which gives it a lovely separation. And that will look like the mud's kind of just drifted down here. And that's what I'm talking about when 
trying to get rid of your creases or a ton of lines. Creases I can work with, creases I can make look like something. A ton of straight lines is a lot difficult to work with. There we go. What a difference a bit of dry brushing can make. Just picking out the rocks. Now adding a little bit of dark around them. I've done a little bit of light gray, medium gray. Literally just working on this first section. As you can see, I've just started using the black dry brush technique just to darken some of these edges down. And then a really fine light just to pick up all the angles and that. What's G-Dog at? I'm doing the wiring, son. <laughs> Before it gets dark. He's putting in some lights. Oh, what could have done with those last night? Although G-Dog apparently found the light switch. Yeah. <laughs> so I could have carried on last night, even when it got dark. Well, look, you'd have never found it. No, no, never yeah. would have found it. So he's just putting in these 600 by 600 LED panel lights. We've got one up over there. They just give this nice natural light nothing too heavy and it's really nice having them nice and high because it means i don't get affected from the uh the light although i've got a funny feeling g-dog we may end up having to put some curtains across these uh yeah they do they do give because it. they on the last video play video. havoc with the camera and we're, in and out black yeah and white, white, so white. i think we may have to sacrifice some lights from there yeah but if we've got six of these yeah eventually, yeah that might have plenty, well, plenty of light I mean, look how much light that's given. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a nice it's a nice amount of light. So, yeah. um, so as you can see, see it's uh, I did my little bit of brown, a little bit of light grey, and this is just that seventy thirty wash I just did everywhere. And now I'm just going to take my time in picking out all the little bits. And that's all I've done over here, really. And uh, yeah, just just taking a, a pretty rubbish paintbrush, really, nothing too spectacular. And just putting putting some load on it, getting rid of a bit of it, and then you got to really think about how your how depth works with this type of thing, with shading and anything like that. If you're going to be adding dark, you know the dark layers are going to be kind of at the bottom and uh, underneath things, and all this is doing is just giving a bit more depth of perception around the area. And it's really, like I've, I said earlier, the pleats I'm now using to my advantage by just turning them into pieces of rock, pieces of mud, anything like that really, that I can then utilize as a, as a feature. Nice and dark around this edge here. There. And basically, I'm going to be doing this with a couple of different colours. Once I've finished the dark black, this is just a black ash that I'm now going around after the dark granite. And then once I've done that, I'm going to mix up a really light grey and just do all the edges, all the facets, all these sharp edges around to really kind of distinguish the, the rock from the mud. And I've also been going around the gravel and stuff like that, just adding a little bit of dry brush here and there, a little bit of grey, a little bit of black, just adding texture throughout the mud, really, just to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. Look at the state of it. Hey, no fear, just getting on with it. Gotta love him, ain't you? You right there, Dido? Yeah. Having fun, G Dog? Yeah. Excellent. I'll carry on talking to the people and tell them how to. Well, just tell them I'm having a good time because I'm always up a ladder or down a hole, whichever you want. That's the way life is. I'll take the brush. Right. I'm going to show you how to highlight the rocks. Okay, so here you can see the two types. These two have been highlighted, this one has only been low lighted. So you can see the ash black coming through. It's got a lot of gray. Now you can see there's barely any paint on this brush whatsoever, but there's enough to add this kind of highlighted area. And what I've done is I've picked up the face edge of the rock. And then what I'm gonna do is just drag it nice and lightly 
over the grains, over the texture, over the little bits that we've got kind of lurking around. And just want to really, as light as possible, kind of drag it across it. And what that does, it's taken from looking like that to looking like that. Okay, so let me show you how I'm gonna be using these creases to my advantage. If you can just about start making out, I'm just starting to low light right in between the gaps, kind of actually making them pop a little bit more than they actually were. Um, giving a much greater shadow effect so that actually as they start to come up they'll have more of a dramatic rock look and you can see the difference in what I'm doing here and then what I'll do is I'll then run a nice highlight over the edges of it and really start to make it pop and you can see the difference literally I've just done this little line here just in there and just a little flick just there and straight away you're adding depth to it so it starts to look more organic more rock like coming along just nicely g dog's still mucking around with the blooming lights nearly finished <laughs> i'm nearly done <laughs> You finished with those blooming lights. They're all done, and, in, and now... Oh, no time, one of them. no time for tea. You said that. I'm taking... You know. <laughs> it's, no, it's not time for tea. I'm allowed tea. <laughs> anyway, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been... Well, it doesn't look like I've been doing a lot. You haven't? No, although I have taken an ash black and painted every single nook and cranny of this whole place. Oh, no, you've place. missed a bit. Yeah, I haven't got to... The, <laughs> you haven't got, yeah, you've missed You can bit. tell the difference. I haven't got this far yet on the camera but yeah, then you can you definitely can, see the difference look. you can start to see the shadow in all up here and the brown's sticking out the top of them we're gonna have some grass i'm gonna do some darker patches of brown in a bit um, and then this side is just starting to come to life with all the, the light the, 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 yeah that's got stuck yeah that's what's <laughs> Just spoiling the view with my phone and my eye. Yeah, that's all right. Later. That's good. So, yeah, we're getting there. Here is the desk. And there is G-Dog. What's that, G-Dog? That is... Grass. Grass. But it looks like sawdust. Well, it's sawdust grass. So what you're saying to everybody... Is save your sawdust. When you're cutting timber... Save your sawdust. Yeah, save and your sawdust because that makes brilliant grass. All right. Well, let's see your magic then. Let's see it happen. What you dogs about to show you is our top tip for grass. <laughs> if you buy model railway grass, it's like £10 for a small packet. This is about a pound for a whole bucket full. Not that size bucket full, but... A, a litre. Is that, is that a litre bucket? Yeah, yeah, about two litres. Oh, 1.5 kilo. So one and a half litres. So it's going to cost you a pound to produce that much grass. Pound the tube. Get it in most places. All you do... What are you wearing, by the way? What are those shorts? No, uh, it's sunny. Oh, God. No, we don't want to see any of that. and shorts. <laughs> so squeeze... Yeah, squeeze that into your pot, whole tube, just like that. Yeah, it's definitely green. Yeah, we're going to make it green. In this one, I've put a little bit of water. Right. Just to get the rest out so I don't waste money. You're tight. So pour that in there as well. Lovely. That way you get it all out the tube. Yeah, I like it. Then you find a stirring stick. This is one Adam's prepared earlier. Here's one I did earlier. It's a grey one. <laughs> oh, it's not a bad stick. Then, from that, yeah. get a handful. Oh, one, two, three, four. Proves I can count. It does. Fine. Well done. Half a tub. Okay, half a tub. I did tell everybody we were going to do a tub. but well, let's just see what colour Half a tub. Like. And then you stir it. And it doesn't look like anything's happening. 
start to get the bottom of it. There's small amounts of trees in there as well, I think. Well, there are, yeah, I mean, these aren't going to take, <laughs> so you, I'll you get rid of those, aren't Okay, you me? take your tree bits out. The more you stir at the bottom, the more you dig up the colour. As you can see, it starts to get... Oh, okay, here we go, ladies and a gentlemen. A little bit grassy. As if by magic, green sawdust. Now, obviously, the more you mix the bottom, the more you get the paint out, so the darker it becomes. You can add black, yellow, make it lighter, darker. We've just done a green. So that feels like I've got everything out. Right, now we need to find a board and spread it out, don't we? We need to just let it dry. Right, so we just tipped it out onto a piece of cardboard. These are our new lights. G-Dog's been working all day on. Now, because we didn't add water, you still get white bits coming through. Right. If you add water, that will soak into the... All the excess. All bits. the but excess, we, but we quite like We quite the, like the, uh, the difference in texture. Now, it is almost dry. But you just leave that for... Overnight, 24 hours. Should we do the Blue Peter job? Here's ones we made earlier. Where's the other ones? Yep. Yeah. And here's ones we made earlier. Just by magic, we've got a slightly dark green. These two look almost the same, but there is a there difference. There is a slight difference. There this, is a is slight a difference. this one here is a lot lighter than that one because this is a mixture of the two. Now, what you can do with these, if you want to really go professional. S super fine. Super fine. Go over to the junk stack. Get yourself a box. Tip it in. Sieve it. Look at that. And you can see that all the fine stuff then starts to come through. And what you're left with in your sieve we is... We can just throw in the bin. All the stuff that you could more or less throw away. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, it is as easy as that. Like you it. could put this on your natural rock course if you wanted to obviously we haven't gone all natural we've gone artificial we've made it all um but you could use it on your on your normal rocks from your garden you know just put a bit of glue on it so the question is how do you even get it on our course wood glue it's 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 what our go-to is we've got a powder wood glue we're going to mix up a solution brush it over where we're going to do it sieve it over the top let it dry the wood glue will suck it up it will go rock hard and look like a patch of grass well that's the theory anyway all right so just your standard wood glue that's all it is um yeah we're using a gorilla product you can use any wood glue wouldn't recommend using pva if you've got water like we have no um and g dogs Three colours. Got his colours of grass. You're very proud. Three colours. You're very proud of them, aren't I you? I am, yeah. You're super proud it's, of them. Wait till it goes on what you've done. I mean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick out some areas. So let's find a nice little spot that I was planning on having a bit of grass, which is just here. So what colour do you want there? So first of all, you're going to want to go nice and heavy with the glue. And then you've got to kind of think how of grass works now because it's quite bobbly there's a lot of um grit in here you need to make sure that we're kind of getting in around you don't want to have to be too neat grass grows wherever it wants to grow i'm not going to worry I'll bring it up there a little bit Get it all along here. Pump? It's definitely waterproof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the glue's, uh, the glue's not struggling. Not no, it will. Um, everything's waterproof now. <laughs> Gotta be with our Niagara Gales. <laughs> Gonna <laughs> blat out. <laughs> Might as well do it because this is the bit I want grass. Yeah, so yeah, I may as well get it. Loads of glue on there. Because it's going to go everywhere. You're going to get a lot of wastage of the grass. Hence why we've done this it. Is why, this is why the sawdust is the cheapest version. Yeah, it, because 
if you're going to waste a load, Which you're going to waste are. three quarters of what you put on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is really cheap. All right, G Dog, work your magic. Oh, seasoning the chicken. I thought he was going to get his sieve and everything out and just start sieving it around there. So he's we're going really heavy. So, you know, expect to get a lot of waste. Now, you could just put a, a bag in the hoover and uh, back it back up. You could. But I don't think... We're not going to do that because oh, we've it's just... We've got plenty of got... the stuff. So, and that's it. You just, can tap it down if you want Yeah, to. we're going to pat it down a little bit. Right, G Dog's going to do his Freddie Mercury impression. Uh, I want to break free. Yeah. yeah. Watch this space. Come on. You who doubted me, I'm just going to suck up the action. A piece of grass. G-Dog's grass works. G-Dog's grass works. Now, was that the light one or the dark one? That was the dark one. Okay. So we could mix a wash and put a light if we wanted to. You can add more colours to it, yeah. You can literally, you know, put the light on top, just on here. Now, we are going to be putting a water base varnish over the top of this just to seal it in so it doesn't come off, obviously. Because, obviously, we've got the water we've here. We've got a lot of water coming on, tyres... You know, when you're trying to spin up there, it will tear it off if you don't put a sealer on it. It is a mat, so it will still look like this. Um, but yeah. It works. It works. Best we better get grass in. Okay, let's get some grass in there. Have you ever wondered if you really need some good artistic skill to dry brush? You don't. As you said, you don't need a lot of skill. you just got to look at pictures, see how rocks go. And at the end of the day, we're, uh, yeah. Just... No one can tell you how, how a rock looks. It no. either looks right to you or it doesn't. Yeah. you just got to get in there and have a go of it, you know. And I suppose the advantage doing it this way, if you do muck it up, you can, you can paint, paint it. over it. Yeah, yeah. Remember, low spots got to be dark, high spots got to be light. That's it. That's all you've got to do. Figure out where your light's coming from. At the moment, my light is all coming down constantly coming down throughout the whole build that is probably the most critical thing you need to learn about doing highlighting and low lighting is where your light's coming from i've done it light coming down and that's it okay and it's as easy as he's showing you how to do it i mean it's, it's not you don't need to be an artist you don't need to be bob ross well, it is kind of a Bob Ross it painting. It's definitely a Bob Ross. It's, it, it's definitely a Bob Ross way of painting. It I've got to admit. Bob Ross has been my inspiration. He, he'd be for, proud of you doing this for years, you know, and happy little accidents all the time. Oh, we get a lot of them. That is what you've got to do, and you know that's what I was trying to say about all these creases. They're only creases until you turn them into something that they're not creases. So now they are rock faces instead of creases. Yeah. Start with your dark. Finish with your light. Bob Ross technique. Take all the excess off your brush. Get in there. Have a and go. just, just, just like this. Just, just paint. You literally can't go wrong. Because you, you know, anything that your brush is going to touch is the high area. That's it. You're only lightly that's, touching that's it. That's your not, high area. Yeah, you're, you're not it, pushing yeah, on the brush, are you? No, no, not at all. I mean, look how quick that is. I mean, that is just amazingly quick. And looks stunning. Um, you missed the spot. I've missed love. <laughs> <laughs> so Next weekend, we are down at Polyscape Scout Group, and I still haven't built my sledge puller. <laughs> you bet you have. <laughs> you best get a move on, because as you said, so next it's going to be a last minute dot com. I probably going to be that. I've got, I've got everything for it. I've got the plan. I've got to make a few custom parts for it. But um, yeah, so I've got to get that done. Um, also, you've got to build my two rigs, because I've got all the stuff. Oh, yeah, build those rigs. Yeah.
Well, I'm not touching it. It's electric. <laughs> Anybody in the UK, check out Polyscape on Facebook. They've got a massive event next weekend. And they're running one tenth, one twenty fourths. They've got a huge trail, uh, outside scale trail as well. And we're going to be trying out their inspired by reactive terrain indoor one twenty fourth scale course, which I'm super looking forward to. I can't wait to have a go on that. Um, this episode is pretty much wrapped up. <clears throat> We've done quite a lot of the painting already. I know it seems like we kind of get through this really quickly. But we're not new to this type of thing, and it is as simple as you want to make it. It's not a modern railway. It's not a diorama. So to spend days and days and hours and hours painting, which we could do, which we? we could do, but it's that. not really kind of beneficial. Not when it's an RC course. As time goes on, things will be added, stuff will get better and better. Uh, if you are joining us to the channel, welcome. And yes. if you're just passing by, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And the notification bell. And I'll, I'll see, see you next time. time.